These are the corrections for the Chapter 12 tests uh, taken on April 11th, 2016. This chapter was about coordinate geometry. Directions show all your work in the space provided and box your answers. Number 1A, determine the distance between the points T and S. So if you go here on your coordinate graph, you can see S and you can see T. You recognize that it is a vertical, so you don't have to use a distance formula. You don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem. All you have to do is count. One, two, three, four, five. Each of these are one unit, so the answer is five. I saw a lot of students not understanding. They saw the word distance, and automatically they try to use the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. But again, if it's a vertical or horizontal, you can just count. Question 1B, determine the distance between the points x and y. Uh, so here's x and there's y. It's a horizontal. So you can just count 1, 2, 3, 4. x, y is equal to 4. Question 1C, determine the distance between the points t and x. So now if you recognize t and x is a diagonal, therefore I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. You just need to make a right triangle. There's my triangle here. So this side, 1, 2, 3, 4. So A is equal to 4 in my Pythagorean theorem. Here B is equal to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. 16 plus 25 is 41. To get rid of the power of 2 here, you take the square root of both sides. The square root and the exponent cancel, so you're only left with just c. c is equal to the square root of 41. If you had put that into your calculator and got approximately 6.4, then I also gave you full credit. Question 1D. Using the graph above, translate line Tx up for units. So all you have to do is Here's t, here's x, move it up four units, one, two, three, four, and then you just write down the coordinates. So that would be negative four, positive five, and x prime would be right one, uh, up one, so one, one would be the coordinates. 1e, translating line segment tx up four units, what you just did, create a rule. Okay. If you're going up 4 units, that only refers to the y-axis, so y plus 4. You're not going left nor right, therefore it's plus 0. You'll recognize that the, uh, the rule works. For example, if you did x, 1 comma negative 3, 1 plus 0 is 1, and negative 3 plus 4 gives you a positive 1. Describe the horizontal translation. The points do not move to the left nor to the right. The x coordinates stay the same. So the horizontal just means left or right. Okay. That one was worth two points, and on that page, that was worth 20. Turn the page. Find M, the midpoint of SY. The coordinates of M are blank, comma, blank. So here's S and here's Y. You need to figure out uh, the midpoint. So essentially all you have to do is write down the two coordinates for S and Y. So S is negative four, um, positive six, and Y is positive five, negative three. You're gonna add your X coordinates together and divide by two, essentially you're finding the average. So negative four plus five gives you a positive one. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, but just leave it as a fraction. To find the midpoint of your y-coordinates, 6 plus negative 3, you're just adding those two together, you'll get positive 3, so 1 half comma 3 halves, or 0.5 and 1.5. That would be the middle. Now some students also did something like this. If you graphed 0.5 and 1.5, something around here. Um, if you can uh, find the same slope, Right, same rise over run, then that would also work. But this one, if you recognize, it's a little bit difficult to do that because it's in between coordinates. Uh, let me see if I get any point value on the side. All right. Question number three. 
uh, simplify the square root of 75. So for 75, what you're going to do is you're going to break them down into factors or just numbers that multiply. Remember, uh, you can use 25 and 3 if you wanted to, but here I chose 5 and 15. The factors of 15 are 5 and 3. So 3 times 5 times 5 equals 75. So there is a pair. That pair comes outside of the radical, and the only thing that's left inside the radical is this 3. Make sure to double check that you can't break down uh, 3 anymore, because this, in a sense this is called a prime factor. There's no other numbers that multiply to be 3 and 1 except for itself and 1. Question number 4. Name the coordinates of the vertices of the image after following the translation. X, Y, and then you have this arrow, X plus 4, Y minus 5. This is a rule. The X coordinates go left and right. <clears throat> so essentially all you have to do is write down the coordinates that they give you. They want M prime, so you should just write down the coordinates of M. Notice how you do not need N, O, or P. So M has the coordinates of negative 1, positive 3. Oops, I made a mistake. So if you can show me, I'll change that. Um, negative 1, positive 3. So class, what's negative 1 plus 4? So the answer should be 3 here, not 5. And if you take 3 and you subtract 5, you should get negative 2. Okay, so the answer is 3 comma negative 2. Next question here is multiple choice. Find the length of the unknown side. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. <coughs> you have 10 and 9. Across the right angle is your hypotenuse C in the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Notice how this one's labeled A. So that's the unknown. Your C is 10 and your B value is 9. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. Subtract 81 from both sides. I get a squared equals 19. If you take the square root of both sides, you'll get a equals the square root of 19. Now, notice how your answers are rounded to decimals. So if you don't have a calculator, you can do some estimating. The perfect square is square root of 16, and the one above it is square root of 25. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. That means that the uh, square root of 19 is between 4 and 5. Uh, specifically, it's closer to 4 because it's only 3 away, and this one is 6 away. So 4.4 would be your closest answer. Uh, question number 6, multiple choice. The line through 3, negative 5, and negative 1, 7, and the line through... Um, 6 comma negative 13 and negative 211 are either parallel, perpendicular, or neither. If you take the slopes, 3, negative 5, uh, 3, negative 5, and negative 1, 7. Notice how going from left to right, these if you connect the dots, they're going down, so it has a negative slope. If you count them, that's negative 12, so going rise over run down to negative 12, right 4. With a rise of negative 12 and a run of positive 4, that gives you a slope of negative 3. If you graph these two order pairs, 6, uh, negative 13, I provided a graph, so if you wanted to use one, and negative 2, 11, you'll recognize that you're going down 24, and then uh, negative 24, and then a run of positive 8. So negative 24 over 8 will give you negative 3. When their slopes are the same, slope is abbreviated by the letter M. If their slopes are the same, which they are, negative 3, negative 3, then it's parallel. And that's the correct answer there in yellow. If they were perpendicular, if you multiply the two slopes together, it equals negative 1. Or we learned the idea that perpendicular also forms right angles. Neither would mean that um, it's not parallel nor perpendicular. Question number seven, if I gave you the uh, equations y plus 20 equals negative 4x and 4y equals 24 minus, 24x minus 24, I'm just going to put both of those into slope-intercept form. So I'm trying to get the y by itself, so I subtract 20. 
There I circled my slope, which is negative 4. The second equation, I'm just going to divide both sides by 4. And 4 goes into 24 six times. And 4 goes into 14 times. Um, it goes in uh, twice with the remainder. So 14 over 4 is uh, negative 7 over 2. That's not as important. The most important idea is to know that the slope here is negative 4 and the slope here is 6. They're not equal, so they're not parallel. They're not perpendicular because if I multiply these two numbers, that's negative 24, not negative 1, so the answer is neither. Question number 8. Find the equation of a line perpendicular to the graph of 14x minus 7y equals 1 that passes through the point at negative 2 comma 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is recognize that the word perpendicular means that there's slopes m1 times m2 equals negative 1. Well, if I take this equation, which is in standard form, and I get the y by itself, so I subtract 14x, because this is positive. I just switched orders there, negative 14x and a positive 1. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. Negative 14 divided by negative 7 gives me a positive 2. And one, positive 1 over negative 7, that will give me negative 1 sevenths. My slope here is 2, so I take the idea that slope is 2, and I need to figure out a number when I multiply by 2 equals negative 1. Or you can divide both sides by 2 and recognize that your slope is now negative 1 half. A perpendicular slope to 2 is negative 1 half. Now I have to go through this point, negative 2, 4. The easiest one is a point slope form, which you can write down in your formula sheet. <coughs> y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm just going to substitute in the x1 here and the y value, uh, y1 here, and your slope, negative 1 half. Uh, when you simplify, that's y minus 4 equals negative 1 half x. That becomes a positive 2. So if you have it, um, that's in point slope. But you'll recognize that all of your multiple choices are in slope intercept form. <clears throat> if you have it in point slope, you can just add 4 here and get this as your answer, which is choice D. Now, if you used slope intercept form, you're still going to take this box of information and you're going to take your slope as negative 1 half. You're going to take your x value and put it in there, negative 2, and your y value 4. So the first thing, in, if you're using slope intercept form, is you'll solve for B. So negative times negative is positive. Uh, if you made negative 2 a fraction over 1, 2 over 2 is 1, and just subtract 1, b is equal to 3. So your y-intercept is 3. <clears throat> just put that back into the formula as your second step, and also the slope we had, and you'll notice that d is also your answer. That side was worth 6. Question number 9, write an equation of a line that passes through a point 18, 10, and is parallel to, to the line y equals negative 2x minus 11. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the slope, which is negative 2. It says the keyword parallel, which means I know their slopes are the same. So the slope of my new line is going to be negative 2, and I'm going to use the coordinates 18 and 10. Same thing if you use point slope form, write it down first. This is your x value, put it there. Your y value is here, and your slope of negative 2. This would be your answer that's acceptable. Uh, if you don't use point slope form, you can also use slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. You're going to substitute the information you have. You have the slope, you have your x value, and you have your y value. You're going to solve for the y intercept first, or the b value, so multiply there, negative 36. Add 36 to both sides, and you'll get b equals 46. Put b equals 46 back into your b value and your original m value, and you have now an equation in slope-intercept form. The extra credit question um, says the midpoint of QR is um, m, 1, negative 2. One endpoint is q, negative 4, 3. Find the coordinates of the other points. So essentially, they've given you the midpoint, and you have to find that other coordinate. So I gave q to be x2, y2, which is negative 4, negative 3, and our r value, which we are trying to solve for x and a y. When you put it in there, you notice that you're solving for an x here and a y here. And you can just multiply both sides by 2. Add 4, and you get your x value to be 6. Multiply by 2, and get your y value to be negative 7. <clears throat>